Welcome back, all you Melgar Maniacs, to another episode of What You're Watching on Melgar Media. Let's get started. Uh, today's first up, something that I've been watching for a few years now and I'm really excited to talk about. Uh, came out uh, The third season came out a couple weeks ago, uh, well, a couple weeks on May 20th, uh, three weeks, four weeks ago, almost a month, well, a month yeah. Um, but it just keeps getting better and better. This is definitely something that... Uh, I didn't know if it was going to last or not or, or how it was going to move forward. But the it just, like I said, it just keep every season just keeps getting more and more absolutely awesomeness. I don't even know how else to describe it. It's just pure epicness. Um, it's, a bun- it's a collection of uh, animated short stories uh, that span various genres, including sci-fi, fantasy, horror, comedy. And it's done by a lot of different artists and uh, animation studios. But, I mean, they secretly just slide in some absolute bangers. I mean, everyone's really good. But there's some that are done by some really big studios that you just had no clue were even involved in this. Uh, The creator, Tim Miller, I mean, this guy just struck gold in this, you know. And uh, if you don't know... What Tim Mil- Tim Miller is known for, I mean, Deadpool director, uh, he's producing this series, The Terminator, Dark Fate, Fate producer, um, Sonic the Hedgehog executive producer, uh, I mean, on and on and on. But he definitely has his finger on the pulse of what nerd and sci-fi and film in- enthusiasts and or show enthusiasts, shorts enthusiasts are all about. And this is chest, I mean, aces. I love it. Um, like I said, three seasons. Uh, I've yet to see a bad one. There are like one or two fillers out of three, though, that still aren't really fillers because they're all shorts. But give this a watch. If you've not seen it, please check this out. I I implore you to give this a look because, like I said, they're all different stories. So they're not, you know, one story can be out in space and the next one on a pirate ship. And the stories are just really good. It's kind of like Black Mirror and Twilight Zone, and I don't know, Star Trek, Star Wars, um, Odyssey, Space Odyssey 2001, just all mixed bag. It's great. Give it a look. All right, and uh, next we're going to talk about a show that I also didn't know how well it was going to do, but I I enjoyed it once HBO Plus picked it up. Um, It was originally on Stars. I don't know, is it still on Stars? I mean, I watch it on HBO Plus, but I think that they... Since uh, HBO Plus is doing, or HBO Max is doing a lot of all the DC stuff, they've kind of taken over the syndication and viewing of it. And it is Pennyworth. <clears throat> and um, yeah, the creator, Bruno Heller, stars Jack Bannon as uh, Pennyworth, uh, the butler of, um, of uh, Batman, the Dark Knight. So, I mean... Alfred Alfred Pennyworth, you can't really go wrong with a origin story of him because they haven't really cast. Even though there's been questionable Batman casts, there haven't there hasn't been a, a bad Alfred in my book. I think that even the animation and everything has been really good, and I think that it's just getting better. This show uh, on BBC as well, I, I feel like will do really well, and. Two seasons on HBO Max or wait, watch on Epics, but you can watch it on HBO Max. That's where I'm watching it. So uh, I will clarify probably in the description where it's actually being premiered. But from where I'm watching it, it's on HBO Plus uh, when the new seasons come out. Um, But yes, thrilling. It's about him in England and his times before when he was uh, in the army. And um, just working side by side, pretty much like MI5 type stuff, like helps the Queen of England numerous times. But uh, just shows him doing trials and tribulations, kind of James, very James Bond-esque. But he just like doesn't have the same prowess in the sense that uh, he, he's a little bit more from the streets in, in an English gangster way. And uh, which makes for good viewing. I mean, instead of just being super proper the whole time, you know, he get, he he does a little bit of a uh, of attitude and sassiness, which I, which I love. And uh, you just see him in his in his glory days, putting beaten downs on on people that give him lip, and you know, love stories and and love interests. I mean, and just 
just what he went through to get to the point to where he felt that he would be better utilized in his elder years as being the guy that watches over and works for the Wayne industry because behind the scenes, he was more than just a butler, as we all know. Okay, and on to the next, man. So I just took advantage of my three-month free Apple TV um, uh, coupon or uh, offer that they give out when you purchase any sort of Mac stuff. I had upgraded my desktop, and they uh, they gave me this this offer again. And I took advantage, finally. I wanted to see, how, you know, after... I, I waited because I wanted to see more seasons of of the shows that they were putting out to see if the channel would make it first of all and to see if the shows were going to make it because I don't want it to be another Netflix where you get invested in a show and then it's gone. So this show, sci-fi show Foundation, is 10 out of 10 for me. I think it's amazing. Um, Super sci-fi, but it hits all the right marks. I know that it's from books. I did not read the books. Um, I think that that kind of helped me out in this show because in some instances, you know, ignorance is bliss. Uh, I saw some of the reviews, quite a few of the the reviews saying that uh, only the first one or two episodes followed the uh, books or the novels and then the rest is freestyle. I like the storytelling. The visuals are spectacular. Um, I think the scenarios are great. The acting is really good, which is just huge. I mean, all the actors that are in it uh, are really great. Um, you, I mean, you have some seasoned veterans like Jared Harris, but with some new upcomers like Lou Lobel, um, Leah Harvey. There's just, I mean, it, it's fun to watch. And when you get new actors, oh, and Lee Pace. I mean, you know Lee Pace from the Marvel Universe. Um, but when you get new and seasoned actors and they feed off of each other and you sh- I'm sure behind the scenes he's, they're giving each other tips and, and how to, it does carry kind of like the early days of Game of Thrones, but space opera-esque. And that, I think that's a really good um, description. And the creators are uh, Josh Friedman and David S. Goyer. And I mean, I can't say enough. I don't want to keep saying and, but there are plenty of ands because... It just keeps hitting. The story is a complex saga of humans scattered on planets throughout the galaxy, all living under the rule of a galactic empire. Where have we heard of that before? Hmm. But these, a lot of these novels, you know, they, 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 their duration um, came from, you know, they're inspired from other space operas and stuff like that. So you can't dislike it. It actually adds to that season. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really I'm thoroughly impressed by this show thus far. Um, the creator, like I said, uh, David S. Goyer, a producer of some of the big things that you've heard of. I mean, going all the way back to Dark City, he was a writer. Uh, the Dark Knight, Batman, he was a writer. Uh, Batman Begins, he was a writer. Um, and yeah, and it goes on and on. He's he's writing for the Sandman series that's coming out as well that I talked about, but. Um, he also did some writing on uh, a lot of the Star Wars video games, Krypton that didn't do so well because I think it was just on the wrong channel, and uh, so forth and so forth. But give this a look. This is a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, wait, patiently waiting on season two. I can tell this is going to take a little while because it is so well done that I'm sure that it's got a massive budget, and I'm sure it takes a lot of time in editing as well. But on to the last, and the last is very fitting because I am late to the show, late to the party, because, like I said, I did not had Apple TV, and um, now that I do, I have been catching up on Ted Lasso. I do have to say, the first couple episodes was, were a little hard for me to see the humor and stuff because I am a massive fan of English Premier League soccer football is what I call it, but soccer in the United States. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they're not mocking or mimicking any. They're, it's just kind of like its own story, but it's based in the Premier League. It'd almost be like NFL. You make up a team, but they're still playing the Dallas Cowboys or you know the Titans or something like that week in, week, in, week out. Um, they don't have players, professional players from other teams out there per se, but they have... 
uh, actors and actresses that are portraying people from Sky Sports, NBC Sports, and the Premier League and coaching and stuff like that. So it did take me a little bit, but I got to say, very heartwarming stuff in there too. Real, a, a really nice feel good, but deals with real life scenarios as well in their own kind of dry humor, comedic way. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the actual synopsis of if you don't know, if you're, if you're a little late like me, is American football coach Ted Lasso, which is played by Jason Sudeikis, um, heads to London to manage AFC Richmond, a struggling English Premier League football team. Um, so you can kind of see how this is, it's kind of like Bad News Bears, um, if you ever watch the old school ones, or the newer one, uh, newer I should say, that came out so long ago, but um, yeah, you've got you've kind of seen this type of satire before, and uh, this genre, but I think that this does really well, I'm on the second season now, and I kind of, you know, I got addicted after about three episodes, four episodes, I was like, okay, I see where this is going, you gotta kind of separate yourself from being too critical of how real or not real it is, uh, or um, how, um, how should I say, uh, precisely like the real thing is. Accurate, that's the word, accurate, long day. Um, but, yeah, give it a look if you haven't. If not, if you have already, please start DMing me and all your memes and jokes, because now I'll get them. <laughs> But that's it for today. Just wanted to hop on, say hello, and I know I missed last week's uh, What You're Watching, um, but there is so much out there, and I'm watching more and more shows on uh, Apple TV, so I'll, I'll be talking more about some reviews on some of those shows. Uh, but stay cool out there in this hot weather, the heat, and uh, enjoy each other. Hug your friends. Love. Don't forget to smash a like below. If you're enjoying the content, we have a lot of great content. Uh, the Scruffy Nerf Herder Show yesterday for the last episode, breaking down of the last episode of the Kenobi Show with my boy Boogie Bills was so much fun. Really crispy show, great. And then uh, what's new at the beginning of the week on Tuesdays, uh, kind of talking about trailers and new things coming out. So hope to see you next week, and then you can go back and rewatch all my other shows and love me that much more. All right, Melga Media out. Peace.